My, my name is uh, Mr. Philip Onyango. I'm a teacher of, uh, in Bokulsun High School and uh, I teach mathematics and business but in today's lesson I'll be taking you in mathematics. Uh, the topic today is algebraic expressions. So first let me write the topic. So in this particular topic, what you must always know is that algebraic expressions simply means use of letters. And that one means all the questions that we'll be solving in this particular topic, the first thing is that you must do the questions by using of letters. Uh, for example, the first one that we are going to start with is use the letters to represent the following informations. Use the letters, use the letters to represent, use the letters to represent these informations. So uh, when we look at the, the first one is find the sum of the first two consecutive integers. I repeat, find the sum of the first two consecutive integers. So the first thing that you must ask yourself, con the word consecutive means what? The word consecutive, if I can just uh, use a normal language, it simply means numbers following each other. As you can see the way my hand is moving. When a number is here, the next number is consecutive to that particular number. Then the following number is also consecutive to that particular number. So. In normal numbers, you always know that the first number is always 1. Then the second number is always 2. Third number is always 3. And fourth number is always 4. But when you look at these particular numbers, you'll see that I've written 1, I've written 2, I've written 3, and I've written 4. But the question is, from 1 to 2, how many numbers did I add to 1 to get the second number, which is 2? So I will use the normal sequence that uh, is always being taught in a primary. You always put some uh, items like this. So 1 to 2, how many did I add is simply 1. 1, you add 1 to get 2. Then when you come here, 2 to 3, you simply add 1 to get 3. 3 to 4, you also simply add 1 to get 4. So when you look at the lower numbers that I was adding to get the consecutive numbers written above, you'll notice that uh, the lower number are same numbers. That one means, when you look at it, the lower number is 1, from 1 to 2 is 1, 2 to 3 is 1, and 3 to 4 is also 1. So, the first question that I had uh, uh, mentioned is, find the sum of the first two consecutive numbers. And as I was introducing this particular uh, topic, algebraic expressions, I mentioned that Algebraic expressions is a topic that simply means use of letters. So as we can look here, and or, or rather as you can see here, you will see that the lower numbers are 1, 1, 1. So it simply means that consecutive number, the first consecutive number will assume it to be X. Remember I told you the topic is all about use of letters. So the first number, when we give it a letter X, 
Then we make a comparison with the numbers that we had written here, you will realize that from X to the second number, we were adding one. Just look above. I was adding one, two, three, four. Then down the numbers were one, one, one. So it means that the numbers that you must add to find the second, third, fourth, fifth number is simply one. So the number here, my first consecutive integer will be x. Remember, when we are supposed to move to the second integer, we are supposed to add one. So from x to get the second number, we are supposed to simply write x plus one. Remember, one is the common number that you are supposed to add to get the consecutive, each consecutive numbers. So when I'm having x, the second number will be x plus one. Then the third number will be x plus two. Remember, x in comparison with the numbers that are written above is 1. But now x plus 1 in comparison with the numbers that are written up is now 2. Remember, from 1 to 2, you are only simply to add 1. But now, the first number is x, the second one is x plus 1, then the third one is x plus 2. In comparison, x plus 2, when you look up here, you'll see it is 3, the third number. The third number up is 3, then the third number down is x plus 2. You may wonder, why am I adding 2? When you are making the comparison above here, you'll see that from 1 to the third number, 1 to 3, how many ones did you add? 1 to 3, I'm having the first one that I added to get 2. Then I'm having the second one that I added to get 3. So how many ones do we have here? We are having 2 number ones. That one means 1 plus 1 is 2. That's why our third number, we are now writing it to be x plus 2. Understood? Yeah. But now, when we go to the fourth number, we'll start it with x. But now, from 1, our normal numbers, 1 is always our first number. But the fourth number is always number 4. You are supposed to ask yourself, from 1 to 4, how many number ones, one each, how many one each did you add to reach four? So from one to four, you simply take number four, then subtract the first one, which is one. So it is four minus one. It means that the number of ones, number ones that you added, there were how many? Three. So that's why our fourth number now becomes x plus three but remember the question is what is the first consecutive what is the first sorry what is the first uh, the sum of the first three the first two consecutive integers so the first integer is x the second integer when you look here it is x plus one so i'll simply write x plus one but now when you are looking at this sum the first thing that you must ask yourself what are the like terms we are having x x then we are having one so we are having two x x that one means x plus x you will get two x then plus one you may ask yourself, why am I writing 2x plus 1? I'm simply writing 2x plus 1 because 1 is not having the letter x. That one means you cannot add 1 to 2x to get 3x. It will now remain to be 2x plus 1. That is the sum of the first two consecutive integers. In a recap, for you, for me to make you understood it all uh, very well, I will again repeat it. I started by saying that normal numbers, the first number is always one, two, three, and four. 
That is the normal numbers. And it continues like that until you even reach trillion. But now the question is, one to two, how many did you add? You added one. Two to three, how many did you add? You added one. Three to four, how many did you add? You added one. So it means one to two, is. it will be one plus one will give you two. Two plus one will give you three. Three plus one will give you four. When you look at it keenly, the way I'm saying it here, you'll understand, you'll understand that the lower numbers are common numbers. We are having one, one, one. So it means that the common numbers that we are supposed to add to get the consecutive numbers is simply one, one, one. One to two, you add one. Two to three, you add one. Three to four, you add one. Four to five, you add one. Five to six, you add one. And it continues like that to the number that you want to reach that one makes us to now uh, come to the fact that the algebraic expression is a topic of use of letters that one means the first number using algebraic expression will denote it to be X then after writing it to be X or any letter of your choice then it means that the second number for us to get it will add one remember in our normal numbers we always add one to get the second number one to get the third number so it means that when we are denoting the first number to be x the second number will be x plus one the third number will be x plus two remember one is our first number three is our third number so three minus one you'll get two so that one means for us to get the third number will be x plus two the fourth number the first number is one the fourth number is four so how many did we add to reach the fourth number which is four four minus one which is three so that one means the fourth number will be x plus three but remember the question was Find the sum of the first two consecutive integers. That one means the first integer, when using x, will be x. The second integer will be x plus 1, as we are always adding 1 to get the consecutive numbers. So that one means our answer will now come from x plus x plus 1, which when you look at the like terms will take x plus x will give us 2x then plus 1 i will hope that you've understood my explanation that one is when it is the first two consecutive integers the sum of those the answer will be 2x plus 1 let us go to number 2 Question number two, which I will now write to be B as our first question was A. It is like this. Find the sum, find the sum of, of the of the first three of the first three consecutive of the first three consecutive consecutive integers the question is find the sum of the first three consecutive integers I repeat, find the sum of the first three consecutive integers. From our first question, you can now understand that the first integer will always be a letter. So now I will not use X because students will always assume that X is the only letter that you can be able to be using 
when you are solving algebraic expressions. I want to tell you that that one can never be that. So what you're supposed to know is that you can always use different letters, even the first letter of your name. If you are Mohammed, you can use the letter M. If you are Abdullah, you can use the letter A. So you should not cram mathematics that you must always use the letter X. So the question, back to our question, find the sum of the first three consecutive integers. That one means our first integer, I will denote it to be Y, letter Y. So it will be Y. I hope you can see. It will be Y. Then I'll put a comma. For me to get the second integer will be Y plus one. Remember one to two, you add one to one to get two. Two to three, you add one to two to get three. Three to four, you add one to three to get four. So that one means our first number, which is the letter, will be Y. Then the second will be Y plus one. Remember, that is the first two. But the question wanted the sum of the first three consecutive integers. What you must know and what you must also realize is that just compare. Y is like our one. Y plus one is like our two. So one to two you add one. That's why the second number here will be Y plus one. But now when we go to the third number, remember our third number in our normal numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and etc., you'll always realize that our third number is three. So the first number is one, the third number is three. One to three. How many do you add to one to get three? It will be two. So our third number will be y plus two. Y plus two. Then the fourth number, our fourth number is always number four. Our first number is one. So one to four, how many did you add to one to get four? It is four minus one. You get what? Three. So that one means our fourth number will be y plus three. Remember the question states, find the sum of the first three consecutive integers. Find the sum of the first three consecutive integers. So we'll count them. Y is our first integer. Y plus one is our second integer. Y plus two is our third integer. Then Y plus three is our fourth integer. But the question simply need the sum of the first three. So the first one will be Y. Remember sum, the word sum in mathematics simply means addition. Or if you can use your normal uh, language, plus. So the first one is Y. This plus, because it is sum, Y plus one, which is our second integer, then plus Y plus two which is our third integer. I'll repeat, the first integer is y, the second integer is y plus one, the third integer is y plus two. Then we'll add them. For us to add them, we must always look at the like terms. So the like terms, we are having y plus y plus y plus one plus two. So you'll come here, then you'll see y plus y plus y. It is 3y. It is a simple reasoning. How many y's can you see with your eyes? You can count them. One, two, three. There are three y's. So when you add a y plus y plus y, you will always get 3y plus 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 will always give you 3. So here will be 3. We'll simply stop at 3y plus 3. The fact is that 
3y plus 3, they are unlike terms. In other words, they, you cannot add them because the last three is not having the letter Y. That one makes them to be unlike terms. So our answer will be 3Y plus 3. Hope the lesson is moving on well. I will now go to my recap of what I've just uh, explained now. As you always know that we are always having uh, different types of students. There are one a teacher can uh, explain, then they get it very fast. But we must always consider the whole class at large. So uh, in my recap, I will say that uh, the question was find the sum of the first three consecutive integers find the sum of the first three consecutive integers. The word sum in mathematics simply means addition, or in your normal language, as I said before, it simply means plus. So, uh, in normal numbers, you, you will always realize that the first number is always one, two, three, four, five, six, as you go on. Then, that one is always being compared to a letter, any letter of your choice, to be the first integer of uh, yours. So uh, the first letter of my choice to be the first integer that I will always compare with my number one is Y. But self-reasoning, you'll realize that from one to two, how many do you need to add to one to get two? You simply need one. That one means uh, the second number will be y plus one. The third number is always three in your normal numbers. But now the first number is one, the third number is three. From one to three, how many do you need to add to one to get three? You simply take three minus one, then you realize that you need only two to get three. So that one makes our third integer to be y plus two. The fourth integer, we'll get it from our normal numbers. The fourth number, fourth integer, fourth number is always four. But our first number is always one. So one to four, how many do you need to add to one to get four? You simply need three. So that one makes it that our fourth number will be y plus three. But the question, you must always be keen as a student to underline the very key part in the questions that you are always doing. Like here, we are having find the sum of the first three consecutive integers. That one will be our first integer is y, the second integer is y plus one, the third integer is y plus two. The question wanted the first three. Then you underline the word sum. So the first three, you'll take y plus y plus one plus y plus two. That one means it will be, uh, you'll bring the y's together. Remember it is addition, sum. So it will be y plus y plus y. Then you'll also bring the numbers together, which is one plus two. Therefore, you will get it to be three y plus uh, three. That is it and you must always understand uh, that. How you are getting the lesson smoothly. Let me go to number three of the topic, algebraic expressions. Number three, which I will indicate it to be C, C, will be uh, this. Uh, a given number will be a given number a given number is added a given number is added to 4 over 5 of itself 
a given number a given number is added to 4 over 5 of itself get the question right a given number a given number do we know the number not at all a given number is added to 4 over 5 of itself then the question is find the expression of the information rather you can also say write down the final expression so we'll write here write down the final write down the final expression a mathematics student the first thing that you must always uh, have is that you must take note of the main part of the questions that are always being asked without uh, taking key notes then it means that the question sometimes you cannot always get it that's why i simply want to move slowly so that you get the very fact of this particular question a given number is added to 4 over 5 of itself write down the final expression a given number a given number so that particular part of the question is a key part so i will take my pen and underline that very part a given number is added that one is just enough a given number so the first question that you must ask yourself do you know the number do you know the number no so that number you will make it a letter of your choice remember this question is just from the very topic that we are doing right now which is algebraic expressions remember i told you algebraic expression simply means use of letters so that one means a given number is added a given number so the first part that you must consider you must give that number a letter since you do not you do not know that particular number so what you'll do you'll say write the number or let the number the normal one that students always like is the word let so it will be let the number be q so i will simply come here then i'll say let the number let the number B Q then you will underline it the reason why sometimes after writing let the number be Q a good math students will always know that when you underline that particular statement by writing let the number be Q then you underline it it will always attract a teacher to get interested with how you want to tackle that particular question so a given i'll just repeat the question again a given number is added to four over five of itself write down the final expression so you, you'll start by saying let the number be q since we don't know it so you'll go back to the question and say a given number do you know the number now yes reason being you've let the number to be q so you'll say q you'll write q a given number is added so which number is added q remember you didn't know the number now you write it q q is added added is also a key part added simply means plus or sum so i will put plus there a given number that is q is added plus four over five of itself four over five of itself so it is q plus four over five that is 
4 over 5 of itself of we'll simply write that word of itself 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 simply means the number that very number itself simply means that very number so q plus 4 over 5 of itself of itself go back to the underlying part let the number be q so it will be 4 over 5 of q of itself so as we move on you see, you'll get that a given number that is q is added plus 2 4 over 5 4 over 5 of itself of q then you leave it like that the question is write down the final expression so remember we are having q plus so here you must consider you cannot just work out the way it is written we are always having what we call board mass after writing the expression the way it is you consider board mass remember remember board mass simply means bracket let me write it Board mass. Board mass means bracket of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. When you look at here, we are having plus and of. I wrote of because it was it came from the very question. Four over five of itself. So when you look at our question now here you'll get that b stands for bracket when you look at it there's no bracket then o stands for off when you look at it it is having off so we'll put the bracket just to make a separation of the question so that we deal with off first then is when we will come to our final addition so i will only put bracket here just to differentiate them so here i'm having 4 over 5 of means times times q that one will be 4 over 5 q 4 over 5 q so remember remember we were having q here so we'll take q plus 4 over 5 q 4 over 5 q as you can see they are like terms so here you put over 1 then you look at the lcm the lcm of 1 and 5 come here you write you draw a line then you look at the lcm of 1 and 5 which the lcm of 1 and 5 is simply 5 then you ask yourself 1 goes to 5 how many times 5 times 5 times q you'll get 5 q plus 5 goes into 5 1 1 times 4 q is 4 q then you come here you look at the like terms here we are having 5q then we are having 4q so 5q plus 4q what do you have 9q over 5 remember we are now having 9q over 5 so you have to ask yourself will i leave it like that yes or will i put it as a mixed fraction that one is a question is a food for thought let me say so 9q over 5 you may leave it like that because this one is called improper fraction but uh, in some cases students may be asked to leave their answers in a mixed fraction so you'll come here or you simply divide them the way they are you write 5 
because it's the smallest number then the upper number is nine you divide by nine so five goes to nine how many times one one times five gives you five then you subtract nine minus five gives you four so when you come here you'll see that five goes into nine one time remainder four so it will be one whole number four over five but which letter are we having q q in a recap as i told you before the reason why we are doing recaps when we are tackling a question is to make sure that what we are teaching has been understood by all students remember in a class we are having different types of students and as a teacher you must consider all of them so i'll make a recap of the question a given number is added to four over five of itself write down the final expression so a given number which number is it i told you before when i was uh, introducing the topic i said that uh, a, a number can be any letter of your choice so to me my name doesn't start with q but just i'm writing q just to make a student know that he or she may use any letter of his or her choice so i'll let the number be q remember a given number which number q is added that one means i'll put plus uh, to four over five that is four over five off just take that word exact word off write it there of q then write down the final expression you'll come here and you say q plus four over five of q the word off in mathematics simply means multiplication or in normal languages we simply say times so it will be four over five times q that one means q plus four over five times q will give you four over five q that one means you take q q then add it to four over five q then q is a whole number remember that put it over one just to make it up a fraction then plus four over five is already a fraction four over five q is already a fraction that one will remain like that then now you look at the lcm of one and five that one will be five then you'll ask yourself one goes to five how many times that one five times five times q is what five q plus five goes into five how many times one time one times four q gives you four q when you look at the numerator numerator i means the numbers above when you look at the numerator here you'll get that we are having five q plus four q so five q plus four q what do you have they are like terms as you can see them all of them are having the letter q so you'll take five q add it to four q then you will get nine q then nine q will be over five as five was our lcm so i told you before that you can either write it as 9q over 5 or simply you can change it to be a mixed fraction remember questions can be set in different ways you can be asked to leave it as an improper fraction that one means if you are asked to leave it as an improper fraction it will be 9q over 5 but if you are asked to leave it as a mixed fraction it will be you'll just use the normal long division method uh, just to write it as a mixed fraction so the downer number is five then the upper number is nine remember q will keep it then after doing the division uh, then we'll now put the q so you'll ask yourself five goes into nine how many times one that one times five you get five so here is always a subtraction far, uh, part so nine minus five you'll get four as you can see we're having one nine five goes into nine one time you'll write it a big one then remainder four over five then you put the word q hope you are understanding the lesson let us go uh, to my fourth uh, question i'll call it d
In a fourth question, still sometimes it can be it can be a word problem. When I mean word problem, still just as the questions that we've done, uh, there are word problems. Word problem simply means there are sentenced uh, type of questions. A good student should be a student who knows how to interpret the statement questions and uh, write them uh, in numbers form so that he or she may calculate it in an easy way. So my fourth question which have denoted by the letter D uh, will be a question of uh, uh, area and also a perimeter tied together. A question can be a sentence type of questions but the first question, the Roman 1 part of the question can be find the area then the Roman 2 part of the question can be calculate the perimeter of the above diagram. Uh, so you as a student, you must always learn to understand, learn to interpret, then things will always work on smoothly. So we are having uh, question number D that states, uh, uh, Mr. 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 Onyango, Mr. Onyango had a plot, had a plot of land, Mr. Onyango, sorry, had a plot of land measuring, Mr. Onyango had a plot of land measuring, measuring, uh, measuring 4x centimeter as, as its length as its length while 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 the width the width of the plot while the width of the plot measured while the width of the plot measured Measured um, uh, two B centimeters. Measured two B centimeters. I want you to look at the question very, very keenly. Remember, this type of question, we are having two different letters. But when you are looking at these particular letters, all of them can either make a student ask himself or herself that how will I tackle this particular question? The concept of uh, the, the plot will just be easy. Look here, Mr. Onyango had a plot, let me remove this, had a plot of land measuring 4x centimeter as its length, while the width of the plot measured 2b centimeters. Then the first question is, Roman 1, part of the question, calculate, calculate the area, calculate the area of the plot. Calculate the area of the plot. I will repeat it so that you get uh, what the question is really trying to ask. Mr. Onyango had a plot of land measuring 4x centimeter as its length while the width of the plot measured 2b centimeters. While the width of the plot measured 2b centimeters. Then the first part of the question Calculate the area of the plot. What you must always get to know is that this type of questions is not good. I don't say it is bad. It is not always good just to come by start writing the formula of the plot of the land. No. A good student should be a student who visions how the plot looks like. Take his or her vision, then draw, 
draw the plot of land for the teacher to see then label the mentioned sides then is when the student will tackle the question that he or she has been asked so the first thing when you look at this particular uh, question you may ask yourself is it a rectangle is it a square is it a triangle is it a parallelogram is it a rhombus is it a trapezium but when you look at it keenly you will realize that two sides have been mentioned the plot has got a side that is called length i will underline it here then the plot has also a side which is called width remember the plot has got length and the plot has got width so you must ask yourself which figure in mathematics has got length and has got width you'll get that the figure that comes in mind is none other than the rectangle itself so the, from the vision of the student you'll get that the student has vision the plot of the land to be the rectangle so you'll come here and you will draw you will make a drawing of the rectangle remember the rectangle it will only be a rectangle when the angles at the corners are right angle triangles the angles at the corners of a rectangles are right angled that one means each of them is 90 degrees so when you draw a rectangle like this without the right angle at the corners then it means that is not a rectangle so what you'll come here you will simply put the angle at the corners just to make a teacher know to believe that you as a student you know how a rectangle looks like so when you look at this particular part you will consider it to be a rectangle the figure itself the length is the longest side of the uh, of the rectangle so the longest side you can only see we are only having two opposite sides which are long is either up here as you can see or down here so that one means i will choose either just to label it i can choose this one i can choose this one so the the length is 4x centimeter i will come here then i will simply write the length is 4x then i put centimeters remember units are always very very important never miss writing units then the shortest sides are the width it can either be this or this it depends with you as a student if you like to label it this side there's no problem if you like to label it this side there's no problem so this other side will be the width remember measured 2b centimeters so here will be 2b centimeters so once you've written once you've identified the length and the width of the rectangle the question you can now realize that the question is very very cheap remember all this statement that uh, is coming from this particular question is just a simple thing is just this particular diagram that somebody is asking you to calculate the area of the plot so when you're calculating the area of the plot and you've realized that the plot is a rectangle in shape there therefore you must ask yourself that what is the formula of finding the area of the rectangle the area of the rectangle comes from a very very uh, uh, class uh, let me say it's just a, a primary uh, formula that still is being used in high school so I, I believe that you students you know the you know how to calculate the area of a rectangle remember the area of a rectangle i'll denote it to be a is always equals to length 
times width. Area of a rectangle is length times width. We, which here, the length, remember you can see it, it is 4x centimeter. So here I will write 4x centimeters. Remember, units must always be written. Then there is a multiplication sign, put multiplication sign. Then the width is 2b centimeter. Here will be 2b centimeters. Therefore, you will ask yourself, remember we are having 4x centimeters being multiplied by 2b centimeters to get the area of the plot of Mr. Onyango. Therefore, you'll come, you'll start always, always I usually tell my students to start with numbers. So here will be 4 times 2 will be 8. After, after calculating the numbers, then now you'll go to the letters itself. X times B, the letters must be alphabetical order. So it will be B, X, centimeters, square. The area must always be in square units. Uh, so uh, in, that is the end of the lesson uh, today. Hopefully, we'll continue next time. Thank you.